This might be the kind of thing that a lot of you skip at first, which is fine, right? It's got a whole paragraph here. That's intimidating when we're running out of time. We're trying to get to as many questions as possible. But I do love that the first word there or close to it is the word quadratic, right? I know quadratics pretty well. You know, we, we get them on every SAT. There's certain facts that we've got to memorize. But once all that's in there, they can't really drift away. It's, it's just going to be some combination of those facts. So maybe even though it's long, it's not that bad. So let's see what the story says. The quadratic function G models the depth in meters below the surface of the water of a seal T minutes after the seal entered the water during a dive. So X's and Y's, that's all it's saying. The function estimates that the seal reached its maximum depth, depth of 302.4 meters six minutes after it entered the water. So, okay, that's a point, right? It's specifically, since it says maximum, we have to interpret the code. That's giving me the vertex is, uh, T is the X, so 6302.4. So that's something. Uh, where were we? Uh, after it entered the water, and then reached the surface of the water 12 minutes after it entered the water. So the surface... Uh, 12 minutes ago, uh, after. So the, the, what is the depth of the surface is zero. So this is a, a case where we have a Y coordinate of zero. So this is an X intercept. So we're not only getting points, we're getting some pretty special ones here. Based on the function, what was the estimated depth to the nearest meter of the seal 10 minutes after it entered the water? So this is some random point, but we have a 10 and we're trying to find the Y that goes with it. So there are a couple things we can do here. Um, my instinct is I, I really want to um, get the equation for this. And so uh, if I have the vertex, there's a vertex formula I can use. So we can we, we should remember that y equals a x minus h squared plus k is that formula. Um, and so we can plug in the h and the k, which are the vertex. So that's not so bad. We can also plug in for y and x this other random point. So let's do that too. Oh, I don't know why I wrote y first. There you go. Don't, don't confuse x and y. So we have 0 is equal to a, and then x is 12. The h is 6 squared plus 302.4. So 0 is equal to 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 squared is 36a plus 302.4. Uh, let's subtract that. Subtract that. And negative 302.4 is equal to 36a divided by 36. Now, why am I solving for a? I don't know. I've got an equation with one variable, one missing piece. Let's let's do it, right? Don't, don't ask too many questions. It's one of those things that you should just kind of do. And so if we do that, we get that negative 8.4 is a. Now, that's not what they want, though, right? They want this y coordinate for this random point. But that's okay. Um, I can do that because now what I have is the full equation y is equal to negative 8.4 x minus 6 squared plus 302.4. So now that I have the full equation, including that constant a, I can plug any value of x in and get the y value out. So we're really just plugging points into equations here. We've been doing that all along. And we're getting to the point where I'd probably stop writing as much on my own scratch paper, but just to show you, it's basically going to look like that, and we're solving for the y. So y is equal to negative 8.4 times 4 squared is 16 plus 302.4. It's calculator time. So negative 8.4 times 16 plus 302.4 is 168. And that's it. We're done. So that is uh, a little bit more of a traditional way to do this. I, I think plug points into equations is really nice. And I, it's, I wanted to show you this as a reminder that, um, you know, stories are very often giving you points when they give you numbers. And we see the word quadratic function. We, we should know we have equations that we can pull out of our memory as a way to plug stuff in. So in this case, think about what they're giving you. They're giving me the vertex. So I went with that equation and, um, you know, I'm plugging it in two different ways. Right, so the vertex gets plugged into the kind of like formula pieces of it, right? The H and the K, the pieces that kind of define the equation. Whereas the x-intercept just happened to be in this case like a random point, so that got plugged into the x's and y's for this equation to just fill it out. And then sure, we had a piece that was missing, but we only had one piece that was missing. That's great, we can fill it out and, and get there. Um, I think we also could do the regression in Desmos. So um, remember, if you have, in, in most quadratic cases, if you have two points, you're good to go. You can you can find uh, the entire equation. So let me show you how we would do that. We have to hit this plus and get a table. 
and then you just type in the points that you are that you have. So six three zero two point four, and uh, what was the other one? Twelve zero. And now uh, Desmos has this. Ooh, it's supposed to have. I don't know why it doesn't have. There's supposed to be a button here that allows me to do a regression. Why isn't the button there? What happened? What if I refresh the page? Okay. Table. Let's try that again. So 6, 302.4, 12, 0. Oh, now it pops up. This is not good. This is the same College Board uh, uh, thing that we're supposed to have for um, for uh, the, the the Blue Book. You know, it's in the Blue Book app. It's the same one. So I don't know why that just glitched out on me. But if I click, uh, you saw me click here, this drop down, and I want a quadratic reg regression because that's what it is. Now, this is going to give it to me in standard form. That's okay. Um, I'm good with that. Um, now, what I really want to do, though, is find this point. So there's a couple of ways I can do it. I could graph x equals 10 and then try to find a point of intersection. Um, I could also do this. I could export as a custom regression after I hit those dots. It's going to put it down here. So that's one way to do it. And then I can kind of rearrange things or plug in what I need. I could also hit, hit kind of, it's hard to show you, but underneath the drop down, you see that little like symbol for next to equation. I could hit that and it's going to put the equation down there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel this as g of x because that's what they, they gave it to me as. That way on the next line, without having to deal with actually doing the substitution, I want to know what g of 10 is. I can do it and it's 168. A lot of those steps that I just tried to do would have been much harder getting this regression. I would have had to build it myself if we didn't get the button to pop up uh, next to the table. And I don't know why it did. Comment if you've had that same experience where this regression doesn't pop up. Make sure you're using the right version of Desmos, either the one in the Blue Book app or you can get a link to it, um, you know, uh, basically right here. Um, I'll put it in the description if I can remember to do that. Uh, if not, comment. Um, but uh, yeah, basically, it should pop up. This is a new feature of Desmos starting in 2025 that you can just have this button to do the regressions and it's really, really useful. I don't know why it didn't pop up there. That scared me. But as you can see, it's certainly much easier to do the regression than we can kind of skip all the steps of having to do the algebra and solve for A and everything like that. And much less of a chance of making a mistake. But uh, I wanted to start with the, the plug points and equations just to show you. But the regression really, really helps here. Tough one, but gettable. Anytime we have a quadratic, we should know what we're up against. It's pretty predictable. So hopefully you can target that question and get that right.